Welcome back to the Boot Tragedies. We're going to recap day three of Saints training camp. It's a lot going on out there, man. The taste of injury, Paulson, in the Debo, the defense looking good, some position battles, and much more. But first, I do want to bring up an audio issue. If you're only hearing this in the right ear of your audio, please let me know in the comment section below. I've, I've seen a couple people say it. I do want to get that issue fixed. So if that's the case for you, just let me know in the comments below. Also, if you're not following the Twitch Follow the Twitch page at the Boot Tragedies, the Twitter page at the Boot Tragedies, also the Discord. Link is in the description below. Follow all of those. Man, I've hit gold on two out of the three. The Twitch channel needs some work, but hey, I appreciate everyone that's followed or subscribed or joined or anything like that already. And first up, we're going to talk about Paulson Adebo, the Saints' number two cornerback as of now. We'll kind of go over his last season first. Last year, obviously, came into the Saints as a rookie. Started a uh, cornerback number two for us. I think Roby was injured, if I remember correctly, uh, to start that season. And one once Adebo got that job, he never looked back. He had his ups and downs, which, you know, every rookie has, but he played well as a rookie. But in this offseason, it's kind of it's kind of been an interesting one for him, even though nothing has really happened to him per se, but just the things around him. Obviously, the Saints, I thought they were going to cut Roby because obviously he had a big cap number in the summer, but he took a pay cut. I think about half of his salary took a pay cut on that. So he came back, so that's just more competition. And then the Saints surprise. Just about everyone taking Alante Taylor in that second round, taking a corner, a guy that, you know, most people thought once he got drafted that he was going to be kind of a safety hybrid uh, type guy. But Dennis Allen came out and said, nope, we see him as an outside corner. And I'm not going to say Paulson Adebo felt threatened in any type of way because it's the NFL, man. Competition is going to get brought in every year to draft every year for a reason. It's free agency every year for a reason. They make trades every year for a reason. So you should never feel secure in that spot unless you're just one of the best of the best. And from all reports out of training camp, Three to four days into training camp, Paulson Adebo looks good. This doesn't shock me at all. The guy played well after missing a year at Stanford, sitting out, coming into the Saints, you know, off of that, playing well as a rookie, thrown into the fire as cornerback number two on a defense that was pretty, pretty good last year. It's very early, but so far he's answering the call, man. The Saints kind of put pressure on him, bringing in guys at his position at a higher draft pick than he was drafted. So obviously that's going to be pressure, but he's answered the call so far. And that's all you can really ask of him. It's early. Hopefully he continues to stay consistent with that. Next, we'll touch on the 2021 draft class. That's last year's draft class. Peyton Turner, Pete Warner, Paulson Adebo, Ian Book, Landon Young and Kawan Baker. This class is shaping up to have a, a great year too. Uh, Peyton Turner's looking good so far. He's finally healthy. He's looking quick. He's looking strong. Pete Warner, who's been sidelined uh, so far, he does have that linebacker two spot next to Mario Davis basically locked up. Quan Alexander um, going to the Jets just yesterday. Also, Paulson Adebo, who started last year, looking good, looking comfortable in that number two role at cornerback right now, but does have competition. Ian Book looks more poised, looks more confident from the things I've seen. I haven't seen a lot. I'm not going to pretend I've seen a lot. Landon Young, this guy's coming from being a six-round pick tackle, a project tackle out of Kentucky. He's taking first-team reps uh, you know, with the offense. Obviously, he won't start that tackle because he's backing up Ryan Ramchick, but still, him getting reps in with that first team, uh, um, you know, being available if we need him starting some games last year. That's good. Then you have Kawan Bake, who's kind of the unknown of the draft class. Didn't really play much last year. I don't really know why, especially because the receiving core was absolute putrid last year, just to be honest. Once you add Pete Warner back to the mix, and if Kawan Baker makes any noise out of training camp, this would be a very good, solid training camp for these year two players, and that's definitely needed for the Saints, man. You really want to see a jump from year one to year two. It's hard to really judge rookies just because everything's new. The games, you know, at a quicker pace, they're probably coming from small schools, big schools. You just don't know. So the jump from year one to year two is always a big telltale sign, at least for me, uh, when it comes to these players. So hopefully they all get healthy, all start making some noise in training camp because we'll definitely need them this year. Hey yo, click that subscribe button man, turn those notifications on and you won't miss another video from the Boot Tragedies. Next, the first injury to report would be Taysom Hill. Um, doesn't sound like it's anything related to that foot, which is the best news, uh, best case scenario from this injury, but... Um, the reports did say he got hit in the ribs, so he had to sit out practice. Looks like he's going to miss a couple of days. Hopefully it's not anything serious because obviously Taysom's going to be an integral part of this offense this year. You know, those short yardage run games going to be a full-time tight end. He's the up man on punt protection, so he's definitely needed, and we need him to stay healthy. Also, we have guys, I wouldn't really add them to the injury list, but C.J. Gardner-Johnson and Bryce Thompson uh, both have to had to leave practice due to the heat. Um, that's not anything major, man. It's hot as hell out here. If you live in Louisiana, it is hot. I'm not even blaming them. You can hydrate and you can do everything you need to do. But sometimes the heat's just going to win, man. The heat's just going to win some of these days. Uh, it's hot. It's very, very early. These guys are in shape, but 
it's nothing like practice. Once you get to practice, you could have had the best all season of your life. Nothing like, you know, practice, going through those motions every day for a couple hours, then having to do it back to back to back days. So I don't think that's going to be anything serious for those guys. And kind of on that note again, uh, guys that were missing today at practice or did not participate in everything, Jawan Johnson, uh, he was off to the side doing drills. Also, Pete Warner was off to the side doing drills with the trainer Davenport, who's still on the PUP list, uh, physically unable to perform, pup list, whatever you want to call it. He was off doing things to the side. Then you have Tano, who's on the non-football injury list. Uh, they said it was an illness a couple days ago. Maybe he's still recovering from that. Then you have Rashid Shaid, who hasn't, you know, uh, did anything during training camp as well, who's on the non-football injury list. So not too many guys. Hopefully they're all back next week to start of next week so we can have a full roster out there and everyone who was overly concerned for Michael Thomas which I kind of understand that he's been gone for two years he was back out there like I said the Saints are just going to ease him into this process you're not going to just have him out there every day full speed doing everything two to three hours a day all of that torque and power and stress on that ankle when it's just got you know healed enough to participate that would just be stupid to do so they're going to take him slowly but he was back out there today and hopefully man we get to see more and more of him he just needs these reps unfortunately you have to balance the reps with the health but i do think he's in good hands with the medical staff man that'll be all for recap of day three thank y'all for tuning in all new subscribers i appreciate y'all don't forget to click those links in the description and as always this the boot tragedies and i'm out